You look like a stockbroker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> John, we're right. going live. Activating the live feed now. One okay. second. I'm just waiting to see it populate. Should be live. Oh, yeah, I just got a notification. Yeah, uh, we are live. Everybody but you. Huh? Everybody but you. Oh, um, yeah, I had my uh, video turned off while I was prepping everything. Okay. There we go. All right, so let me go back here. Now that we're live, I'm going to activate the sharing. That should bring up the screen. And just to validate that we're there. I'm just going to go over here, check the main feed. Yeah, good to go. Okay, so uh, I will go ahead and bring in the intro like normal. Thank you everyone for joining the East Springfield Neighborhood Council management and a board meeting for uh, June 16th. Uh, just want to remind everybody, uh, we're going to take questions in the live feed as we go through the event. Uh, if you have any questions to bring up for the officers or about any of the agenda items, uh, please feel free to comment or uh, put those questions into the feed as we go along. Uh, we'll stop and answer those um, sometimes in the middle, but definitely towards the end. I'll put a reminder up for questions as well. Also, if you have not subscribed to us on YouTube, if you could please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, we're about halfway to what we need to get our, um, our page name. So it's easier when I put out the information to get YouTube stuff. Um, that being said, I'm gonna turn the uh, meeting over to our council president uh, to go ahead and get started. Thank you. Welcome to the East Springfield Neighborhood Council and Community Police Management Team meeting. Let us please start with a pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and Okay, well, welcome to the East Springfield Neighborhood Council meeting. Um, we have a quorum with us today. We have um, myself, I'm Kathy Brown, Marie Koski's here, Peggy Shea, Guy Kennison, Brenda Spaulding, Lucy Castaway, Ken Gillette, Lynn Burnett, and John Koski. We also have with us right now, um, Officer Julio Vasquez, and we're expecting Lieutenant Julio Toledo. Um, all of your questions are important. So as Guy said, please type them up and, and get them to us so we can make sure that we're able to follow up on all of the things, even though we can't meet together in person. A couple of things on our agenda. Most of you already know the newsletter has been mailed to all residents and it's also available on our website. So please take a look at it. On that newsletter, you can fill it out a form and become a supporting member of the East Springfield Neighborhood Council. It's a $5 per year. We go from June um, to May. And if you're willing to send along $5, it really helps us out a lot with our expenses. Also on the agenda, I have um, just a note that we do meet, we meeting Kathy Mossy, the president of the Hungry Hill Neighborhood Council, Mike Fenton, our ward representative and myself, we meet with the plaza ma management once a month to talk about issues and concerns. And over the past week, they, man they didn't fulfill their promise to us to get another stop sign up by Rockies that had been for a while and also an additional do not enter sign. So that will make the traffic around the back by the Dunkin' Donuts safer. So um, that, those meetings have been very productive. I did receive an email from someone saying that there was some trash issues. We sent that along to the plaza, and I hope by now those, those issues are taken care of. So I'm 
So we're, we're grateful that Plaza is willing to meet with us once a month. Also, it's important to, to complete the 2020 census. So if you can just go online to 2020census.gov. It will depend on how it, the census will tell us um, how much money we're going to get in our community for things like schools and hospitals and um, infrastructure. So please, if you haven't done it yet, please do so. Okay. Um, our electronic speed driving a safe free Springfield. John Kosky, would you like to take over with this, please? Yeah, I think actually it's a follow on to our, our last meeting. We're able to announce that uh, we have successfully installed three um, solar powered radar speed boards on St. James Avenue at the curve and Page Boulevard near the intersection with Bircham Street and on Worcester Street. So if you've driven any of those areas, you've probably seen them and we're hoping that that's one more tool that will help us out with our uh, driving a safer, safer East Springfield. Did you want to address the chicken speed now, John? Yeah, we can do that. Um, you know, we have um, been receiving um, feedback from many of the neighbors in the neighborhood talking about how they've noticed an uptick in speeding and an uptick in unsafe driving on the streets. Um, you know, we've been kind of waiting for this uh, pandemic thing to sort itself out and, and all that. And I, I, I think we're at a point where we really want to uh, start driving some activity in our neighborhood to help along with these electronic speed boards to help drive or to help um, mitigate some of this activity that we're seeing. So um, we really want to put it, we're, we're planning on uh, starting up our check your speed events again. Uh, we do have an event planned for July 10th. That's Friday, July 10th from 4.30 to 6. And that's on the St. James Avenue curve. That's, we'll meet at the intersection of St. James Avenue and Campeche Street about uh, 3.50. So we'll be out there with signs from, from uh, excuse me, I said 4.30 to 6. So we'll meet around 4.20. Um, so uh, we'll observe all the social distancing and all those safe practices that we need to uh, do. We think we can, we know we can successfully run this event. Um, we'll, we'll do this with the neighborhood. We'll do this in conjunction with the radar speed boards. And at the moment, we're not sure about having resources from the police department. Um, the uh, traffic bureau is in transition right now. So that may be something that we'll have to hold off on, but we think we'll still be effective with us there, the neighborhood there with signs and with the radar. Hi, Lieutenant. Hi, how are you? Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, Guy, would you like to address the Art Out of the Box project? Okay, yep. Um, Art of the Box uh, has fully started now. We delivered the first 100 plus boxes this past weekend. Um, Irene went through and packed a ton of stuff. We loaded the truck and we went out and uh, uh, we got some really good feedback from people in the community. Um, as we were dropping off the boxes, we were texting people as, as we put them there. Um, some of the pictures you see here um, were sent back um, from different uh, people who received the boxes and ha had okayed us to um, put the images out for people to see. Um, the comments are here. Uh, you know, this is such a wonderful idea. Thank you. Um, we are grateful for it. Thank you for the councils and Irene for spreading kindness with others. Um, there was a grandmother who's homeschooling and um, working remote. And we actually got a text back today um, with a picture. She had uh, uh, covered the, the kitchen table with plastic and just let them go to crazy with the uh, <laughs> our kits. So, um, so that was that was good. Um, so I think it was very successful. We're gonna have the um, other half of them go out in the next few days. We had a couple volunteers um, who had signed up for some deliveries. So we're going to be reaching out to them later this week so we can 
um, see if they're still willing and then give them some uh, list of people to drop off to get those done. And then we have all the supplies in for the next two for July and for August. Uh, we will be probably at the next meeting, beginning of July, we'll have the link out to sign up for that. Uh, the July one is going to be, should I should go into details right now? Or? Oh yeah, there's, there's, 20, there's 20 boxes left to sign up for right now. And we'll be closing the signups for the current boxes. Then once those are closed, probably in a week or so, we'll start signups again for the next round that'll start in July, which will be a new project, which we'll mention at that time. And there'll also be a new project in August, which will bring up details. I guess Irene's uh, keeping the suspense going. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, let me introduce or reintroduce John Kosky. He's our chairperson of our community police management team. And I'm going to push the meeting right over to John Kosky. Hey, good evening, everyone. Excuse me while I get my notes. I'm back. So um, I'd like to welcome, um, um, we have Lieutenant Julio Toledo with us this evening and we have Officer Julio Vasquez uh, here with us this evening to talk about uh, policing activities in our neighborhood. So I'll turn it right over to uh, Lieutenant Julio Toledo. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I'm just turning down my work radio for a yeah. So good afternoon. My name is Lieutenant Julio Toledo. I am, I was asked to uh, help uh, Lieutenant Ariel Toledo and Lieutenant Geyer at this meeting today. So I have a handful of things to report. Uh, not much, but just uh, looks like there's been three, there was three arrests in the sector in the last 30 days, but we'll over uh, the major crimes report and arrest log and hotspot reports and quality of life calls. So over the last 30 days, uh, there were seven reports for burglaries and breaking and entry, uh, four thefts from motor vehicles. Uh, and the common theme in these motor vehicle breaks is that oftentimes leave their cars unlocked or the things in their truck bed. Uh, so I always remind people that they should be cognizant of locking their doors in the evening. Uh, sometimes these things should be prevented if people take uh, small steps like that. With regard to the arrest, there was three arrests for various offenses. The first arrest was an uh, individual named uh, Michael Mina. He was arrested for an arrest warrant for breaking and entering. The next arrest was uh, on 1608 Carew Street. Uh, Mr. Thomas Supernat, he was arrested for assault with a dangerous weapon threat to commit a crime. And the last arrest was at a vacant home at 1515 Carew Street where an individual was arrested there for trespassing. So I don't really know all the details with regards to 1515 Carew Street, if it's an abandoned house or if the individual was squatting on this property, but that individual was arrested uh, at that address for that offense. So those are your arrests. There was one call for drug activity, two calls for shots fired for a total of three calls, which is a good thing. Again, with regard to quality of life call, it's uh, one call for the barking dog. There were 39 calls for unnecessary noise. I'm going to speculate that those were largely around fireworks complaints. There's been an increase citywide with, with regard to fireworks. Uh, actually, statewide, I, I saw on the cover of, I think it was a Boston Herald, uh, Boston, Massachusetts has had somewhere like around a 230% increase in calls for fireworks. So that seems to be a common problem throughout the Commonwealth. The next one is uh, three, first, three calls for suspicious persons and 10 calls for suspicious one vehicles, uh, four calls for second, for a total of 57 calls, which is good. We, uh, we want calls for service uh, because that's the, the one hand washes the other. So we have to work together on these issues. So those, that's essentially uh, everything I have to report with regard to criminal activity uh, from May 10th to June 6th. But I'd be happy to entertain any questions if I can. Lieutenant, I, I know you indicated that many of the calls for noise might have been fireworks. I do know that we are getting many complaints about noise, music noise. Okay. And on the pin dot map, you can see there's a, an area around that Watlet and Curry Street area. And there is also, um, you can pull that back guy. 
the Watling and Curb area, and then also in the it looks like the Arthur Street area, um, and those are those are noise calls, loud music. Um, so there are some clusters that we want to kind of pay attention to. Okay, that's uh, yeah, we can do that. That's uh, um, like, and I know uh, with regard to the fireworks details, the yeah, department does have a team of officers that go out now dedicated to deal with the fireworks issues. And what we've been doing is we've been proactively targeting this issue by issuing city ordinance violations for the noise and city ordinance violations for the litter that they leave behind after the fireworks explode. And of course, uh, if you don't know, mass in Massachusetts, uh, possession of fireworks is it's not an arrestable offense, but it is a crime uh, and they get a criminal complaint attached associated with the crime. The only time it's arrestable fireworks is if someone is actually selling fireworks then that, at that point it becomes arrestable in our presence right so well yeah that that's uh we we can have uh the ordinance guys and the the squad officers pay attention to that area for the unnecessary noise certainly that shouldn't be an issue thank you my pleasure any other questions you mentioned that um you made an arrest for breaking and entering i think there was a person that was arrested for breaking and entering and it it seems like we've had an uptick of yeah. breaking and entering in and around the the um, well, actually, you know, around Marshall Roy Park, you know, the the village and that part of Carew Street. Do you think possibly this individual that was arrested may be part of that trend? Uh, well, the, the the individual that was arrested was arrested for an arrest warrant for breaking oh, and entering. Oh, okay. Yeah, he wasn't arrested for B and E. He was arrested for a arrest warrant for B and E. So, but that uh, that said, it's entirely possible that he could be, given the. Yeah, given okay. That. No, I just. I'm not ready yeah. to speculate on that. I mean, that's right. just, that would be that would be up to the detectives to follow up on that and ask questions in that regard. Any other questions? Comments, concerns, criticism. Uh, yeah, compliments? I do. Yes. I, yeah. um, I wonder, um, are the metrics uh, kept for when the police respond to mental health emergencies, if they like assist crisis in going to a, a, a house? Is that something that you guys track as well? I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that the police department has been pretty proactive with regard to mental health uh, crises and mental health issues. I know that we ride along now with uh, individuals from BHN. And when we encounter someone that has a mental health issue, we tip, we call those people to try to de-escalate the situation, and yeah. hopefully we transport them to the hospital as opposed to keeping in handcuffs. Uh, yeah. The police department. Um, but in terms of, I I don't know that they're keeping that they're charting the, the numbers on that, but I don't imagine it would be terribly difficult to do that. But I, right. I don't have the answer to that. I can tell you though that we have been very proactive, actually ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. on those yeah. issues. Um, there's uh, Bishop Boyd that I work with. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you know him, but no, yeah. he, he's very vocal in that community. Um, and we've had a number of meetings. Uh, I, I've worked I, I, I worked with Boyd uh, many times in the North NC3 unit and been very proactive on that issue, very vocal on that issue. And the police department has BHN uh, professionals that respond to these calls now. And uh, we will call ambulances and have these individuals transported to the proper facility so, so they can get the help for their mental health issues. Uh, yeah. I can tell you that somewhere, is, I mean, from when I look at the statistics, I think there's like 40% of people that have mental health issues and many of them don't have, uh, they're not diagnosed. So it is a, it is a big problem, you know? Uh, and I think the police department has been pretty proactive on that issue. Yeah, I, I would agree. I just want to know if we had numbers. I, I would imagine if there's an uptick in mental health emergencies because of COVID and isolation. I, oh, I, I see. Know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, again, I, I don't know the numbers on that. I couldn't tell you that definitively, but I, I, I wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me if there was because of the isolation, because of COVID and stuff. That wouldn't surprise me. But I do. I know that definitively. No, I don't. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. Anyone else? If I can jump back in again, just one of the things that's been very noticeable, and I don't know where you were on before when we were talking about uh, our driving uh, for East Springfield initiatives, but uh, we've, we've, we've had a lot of neighbors talk about a noticeable increase in speeding and just um, unsafe driving. And 
I know from, you know, not being retired and being at home and, and living on St. James Avenue that there are days where engine break and people playing music in their automobiles and motorcycles and um, sirens or um, the, uh, we have an ambulance company that has a, has a garage, I guess, someplace on St. James Avenue and they service Chicopee. Um, between all those things, and I, I understand the, the, the ambulance sirens are, I guess that's, that's, that's their discretion, how much that they, they're, they're gonna run those down the street. But just um, if it'd be possible to have an initiative where we have some folks focused on, on cars that are driving with very loud music or cars that are driving with very loud exhaust systems yeah. or um, trucks that are driving and using engine brake. It just seems to be, it's, you know, it's, it can be an afternoon, Saturday afternoons and Sunday afternoons are particularly bad, not for engine brake, but for motorcycle, car, car mufflers, um, car music. Um, I just don't know how much, I, if there's some way that um, we can just get the public's attention that there are ordinances and some of this stuff just isn't, you know, it's not acceptable. Okay, so I can answer that. I know that uh, on the weekends we have, uh, I've been tasked with dealing with a drag race issue that has happened. Yes, in yes. Um, so what we, uh, it, it's not city ordinance violation, it's actually Massachusetts general law after nine motor vehicles law, traffic law. So what we do is we, we uh, pull over vehicles that have modified exhaust to amplify the noise of the, of the vehicle, which is yes. it sounds like what you're discussing. Uh, so those individuals will get pulled over, will get cited. We've been very proactive on that issue. Uh, yeah. And it's not necessarily, it may not necessarily fall under your sector C, but what they'll typically do is they'll go to the north end on Bernie Ave or on Main Street and that runs into the Chicopee line on Main Street. And we see the activity in Industry Ave, and we've also seen the activity on Worcester Street and Indian Orchard, which runs behind uh, Sector C. Right. So we've right. been very proactive on that. But if you'd like to see, and, and I know that Captain Martin, who's in charge of the Traffic Bureau, has also had details on uh, Page Boulevard to cite motorists for speeding and other traffic-related issues. So I, if that answers your question, I know, and we'll continue to do that. Thank you. My pleasure. Any other questions? Um. Someone mentioned to me the other day, the, the tow truck that's been parked on off of Cruz Street, evidently this guy has a business across the street, one of the homes in the village, I think right around Cruz Street. And he evidently has a few people working for him because they, they park on the side, on Ann Street, um, um, which is not illegal, we realize that, but the fact that there's a few people working there, this person is questioning whether or not this business is legal. Okay, when you say working, are you suggesting to me that they're working on vehicles on the street? Because if so, that's a city ordinance violation. Sounds like he's got a business going. He's running. I, I know. My question though is, do you, think, do you believe that- It's a tow like truck. I'm sorry? It's a tow truck and he has not been there for seven days in a row because I walk at 6.30 in the morning and he was always part of there. But he hasn't been there for seven days is what you're saying? Well, he, he works for a company and when you have a problem with a motor vehicle, he picks it up for that company, but he, he was parking on Ann Street. Right. Okay. I think I think that's I think that's correct. I mean, um, Officer Vasquez, you have been working with this for for a while, and over the past seven days or so, it has, according to the residents, it has not been parking there. Okay. What I think what Marie is saying is that um, the information that is that she has is that the man who is parking the vehicle there some of the time um, for longer than an hour actually lives fairly close by and also runs a business out of his house so that they, um, his, his worker bees will use the truck when they need to. So it's like running a business. And actually that's something that we need to talk to code enforcement about the zoning because a business out of a residential home falls under that category unless you have more information, Lieutenant. Well, that sounds, that's correct. I would agree with you. 
So, but I think it's on the table now that, that it's actually a business that's running out of there with employees, um, as opposed to what we originally understood is it was um, a person who had a truck or two trucks that parked them over on Ann Street, um, and it was just him, but apparently we're told that he has employees. So we'll work, we'll submit that to code enforcement and have them investigate it. Fair enough, is that good, Marie? I think so, that sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a couple things that came in from the Facebook feed. So um, the last couple meetings we've had, uh, we had discussions about um, either uh, shed breaks or um, cars broken into. Uh, someone else on the feed they recently had a catalytic converter assembly stolen from their car while it was in the driveway. Um, there's also, um, un, you know, a lot of unsafe driving. And I know that we, we got the speed boards that went in recently, but yep. the, the combined questions looks like, what is the, what is the current policing happening in East Springfield? And is there anything done recently with the, the small spikes we've seen here and there for the, the shed brakes and the driveway brakes and the car brakes um, for patrols being increased, or is there any happening like that? Okay, so with regard to the traffic, the traffic issues on uh, St. James Ave, as I mentioned, uh, Captain Martin has already uh, had de has details there. In addition to the regular traffic hours, uh, officers that work on the quarter twelve shift that give special attention to those locations, uh, conducting traffic enforcement. Assuming that they're not, you know, tied up with a with a vehicle accident, so that that has been being addressed. As far as the B and E's are concerned, the uniform division officers that work those areas are privy to this information, and they also have an opportunity to look at the maps. And they too have have conducted what we call uh, DPRs, which stands for current patrol runs, in those areas uh, to deter this these uh, activities from happening. But I will say, you know. Uh, the police uh, are, are doing that, but again, like I mentioned, one hand washes the other, and we should always remind our friends and neighbors to keep, please, please, please keep your doors locked. Please, please don't leave anything in plain view in your vehicle. Um, even if you think it's something insignificant, like a like a car charger or even 50 cents, someone that might be down on their luck or someone that might be a substance abuser um, that needs a dollar may break into your car to steal something that you might might be insignificant to you but may be very significant to someone else so um, we should be cognizant of that okay another question that came in through the facebook feed um is the city giving out permits yet because this past saturday marshall roy field was packed with people and there was a vehicle parked in the middle of the field um playing music uh, I know that in the last few weeks, we've seen an increase of people driving on the field, which uh, is a big problem because there's sprinklers there and they can, you know, damage the sprinklers plus, you know, the safety of people driving on there. Um, somebody else mentioned that, you know, they saw cruisers go by, but the car was in the middle of the park. Um, what is the policy if an officer sees someone parked in the park and... I guess the other question to that was, uh, are they giving out permits again? Because they're seeing the, the park heavily used. Okay. So I know the first half of the question was regarding to the permits. I don't have an answer to that question. I, as far as I know, I don't, I don't believe that, but I don't, I wouldn't be able to answer whether or not the uh, city is actually handing out permits. That would probably be a more appropriate question for somebody that works in that area. I don't, honestly, I don't know. And secondly, if someone is, parked on a, on a park. I, I, I memory, if memory serves me correctly, I was here probably two months ago and someone had mentioned the complaint about a vehicle having parked in the park and blasting cars through uh, big, large speakers. Uh, I don't know if they're referencing that very same event or if this is an ongoing issue, but if it is, I would certainly encourage individuals to certainly call the police because we have to address it as it, ha if, as it happens, when it happens. Uh, so if you see something like that, certainly call the police. The vehicle could be so towed, the video uh, potentially could be towed, certainly could be cited. Uh, and uh, of course, when we approach the vehicle, so, I mean, there could be any number of circumstances that could surface once we're responding to that complaint. But you can't drive a car, even if you, I mean, 
unless you had a permit and it was a community event, which I'm not aware that there that there has been. Um, I, I'm 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 only again speculating here that they probably didn't have a permit, and I would certainly encourage individuals to call the police if and when they see something like that happening. And the police officers who respond, you know, should address it by either advising the individual, issuing a citation, or going wherever the law allows them to go. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Um, there was another question that came in about the the fireworks and um, loud music. Apparently they had um, people in their neighborhood that were lighting off fireworks and loud music. They called, uh, it was between uh, one and 2 a.m. They did not get a response. Um, now they didn't send the address and I wouldn't wanna put it on the Facebook live feed if they did, but is there a place that they could send over the address? Cause we all know fireworks is a big concern right now. So is there an email address or something they could send the address to if they think that fireworks are going uh, that way it's private to you guys? Yeah, I, I would say I, first, first and foremost, I would strongly encourage those individuals to call the police. Um, if you're not satisfied with the with the response time, you can call back and uh, or you can talk to whoever the supervisor is in charge at that time. Just bear in mind that I know over the over our last weekend, we I personally worked a fire until we took north of uh, on one day when, within a four hour time frame, and we responded to north of uh, 40 complaints with regard to fireworks and going on all over the city. So I would first ask the, the callers to be patient because there are an abundance of calls for that. Secondly is always call the police anytime you have an issue and if you and just keep returning the phone call. Third, if she wants to send an email, I would suggest sending that email to Suheili Arce and Suheili Arce will, will, uh, will uh, direct the attention to the appropriate sector where that has the issue or the appropriate street that has the issue. And just keep in mind, like I, like I said, uh, possession of fireworks in Massachusetts, just mere possession is not an arrestable offense. The city order, it's a violation, it's a criminal complaint. Um, but of course, you know, if something uh, develops from that encounter, then it could lead to an arrest. But on its surface, simple possession of fireworks is not an arrest. Offense. It is a fine. Uh, they give them typically a noise, a noise ordinance violation and a probably a littering violation and a criminal complaint for the possession of the fireworks. All right, thank you. And then the one more question I have from Facebook is uh, they just wanted to make it known it looks like for the the overnight patrols. Um, there is a moped that travels up and down St. James Ave CVS, the 291, through the night when most people are sleeping. Um, I'm not sure if it's, if they're referring to like a moped or like if it's like a motorcycle that's going through and, um, but if they're in the area, uh, they wanna make the officers aware of that. Can you give me more details about this moped? What time, what color? It says a moped. It says it's happening from between CVS and 291. It's between, um, travels up and down St. James, CVS, through the night when people are sleeping. Doesn't have an exact time. Um, if I, if the person, it looks like they're still alive in the feed. If you send back any other details, we can get that over to the officer. Or if you email that in, um, when I post up the, the info for this, we have the contact numbers and tips. Um, I'll make sure that we put in the, the notes um, Sue Haley's email so that way we can have uh, um, emails go back to get back to the lieutenant. Now, ask them to give me like a description if they can, as best they can, maybe a color of the, or maybe a description of the, the operator as well. Yes. Okay, if they come back in the feed um, during the meeting, then. I'll, I'll get that over to you. If they don't, if they come back through email, we'll forward it along. And okay. then um, that's everything I have in the Facebook feed. Um, Kathy, did you have anything that we didn't cover? Um, I, I, I did, but did we want, can, can we bump back, John, can we bump to um, Officer Vasquez to see if he has anything to report? Uh, yes, like please, yeah, for sure, yes. Officer uh, Vasquez, I think you're still with us here. Yeah. Um, 
In regards to Cassiano's towing, parking on Ann Street, the tow truck, he has been issued multiple parking violations. Um, I've been on top of him and he has been advised. I haven't seen him the last week or the last week and a half parking on Ann Street. Me either. Okay. Um, in regards to Sargon Street, they've been issued multiple ordinance violations. Um, the house has removed two or three um, um, unregistered cars, and I have done directive patrols in that area. I haven't observed any um, drug activity when I've done my directive patrols. Um, I am monitoring Arthur Street um, in regards to the noise complaints and uh, the truck and the tractor trailer. I haven't observed any of it, but I am monitoring Arthur Street. Um, in regards to that Windermere Street with the commercial vehicle, um, they were issued a parking violation for the commercial vehicle. And they haven't been parked there since that last time. And New England Auto Sales, they have paperwork pending with City Hall, but due to COVID-19, City Hall was closed down, so they haven't um, done anything with the paperwork. I know that was a question that was uh, asked uh, at the last meeting. And that is all I have right now. Thank you, Julio. Um, I, I have a follow up on that, um, the paperwork. The paperwork has been submitted to City Hall and it will probably have a, um, a virtual meeting towards the end of August on okay. the paperwork for the auto place. I mean, that's what I just got from planning today. Okay. A couple of other things that I have, if I can, um, John, can I, can I say the oh, few yes. other oh, things? Oh, please. Yeah, go ahead, Kathy. Um, we did get notified that 85 Edendale Street is very messy. And, and if um, Officer Vasquez is interested in taking a quick look at that, and also 78 Lang Street. When you say messy, what do you, what do you mean messy? Trash, litter, debris. On uh, Lang Street. Street. Say it again, Julio. At both houses. At both houses. At both yes. Addresses? No, Brenda, did you, are you saying that I, there's additional information? Seventy-eight Lang Street. The house is literally falling apart around its foundation. On the side of the house, you can see through the walls. You can see the insulation through the walls. Somebody is parked there maybe three days a week in the morning. So somebody is in that house. So probably, uh, Officer Vasquez, would it make sense for, I mean, you can take a look at it if you want, but it would make sense to pull this one over to code enforcement in the building department if it maybe is a structural issue? If it's a structural issue, that's enough. That's nothing that I can um, address, but uh, I can talk to McNulty in the morning because I'm going to see great. him for another issue. And I'll mention uh, 78 Lang Street. Soon. Oh, thank you. Perfect. Okay. Very good. Okay. Oh, I have a question, Kathy. Yep. At the end of Ann, Ann Street, on the, right there on Karoo, there are five big blue trash barrels full of junk the blue shouldn't be plastic bags but they are it trashes the whole area there's five of them corner and of i know Ann. that's not you either Julia. at the corner of at Ann and where corner of Ann okay and ann street right on Carew, right across the street in front of the village oh okay there's so five big blue trash containers yeah, but you know, blue is supposed to be recyclable and there are plastic bags in there. Okay. okay. So I don't know whether they didn't pick them up because they're not legal or what? I think some of the village gets picked up by a private uh, trash hauler. Yes. With the yes. blue buckets, yeah? I don't know, I, but I have seen trash out that has been, uh, it's not Springfield that picks it up, it's, it's another... Uh, like they, have three, like, they have three different contractors inside of Mallory Village that picked up uh, their okay. bulk items and bulk trash, but they do different days. Sometimes it's Tuesdays, sometimes it's Wednesdays, and sometimes it's Thursdays. So they have different days from the city of Springfield. Okay, well, that's the answer. Thank you. 
Okay. And then I guess one last question. Somebody had uh, just asked, how many cars cover this area? Um, doesn't say what shifts, so I'm just, I'm, I think they're asking in general. Uh, in terms of, in terms of sector C? Yeah. So sector C has, uh, has a car on each shift on all three shifts. They have at least one black and white patrol car uh, response to calls for service. Sector C and uh, assignments to, to uh, particular sectors is typically relegated by the amounts of calls for service in those in those sectors. Um, then you'd have the support from the surrounding sector cars as well. But the specifically des uh, designated car would be one. Then you have ordinance uh, people uh, officers that work that area. You'd also have canine officers that work that area, and you would have traffic officers that work that area. But with regards to uniform. A black and white 911 driven cars, it's one car. Very good. Any other questions? That sounds good then. I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Lieutenant Toledo and Officer Vasquez. Appreciate your, uh, appreciate your help. And uh, just one last thing on, uh, um, on our Policing activity and driving a safe in Springfield. Just want to remind folks that we do have signs available. Drive like your kids live here. Signs available for eight dollars each. And uh, as you may recall, last year we started an initiative. We wanted to get as many of these signs throughout the neighborhood as we could. So we want to want to get the word out there that they are available. They can you can get them by contacting me at um, my number is 413-374-4416, or you can email me at jkoski12 at hotmail.com. And I think, Guy, that you have that information up on the MyESN website, correct? Correct. Yeah, okay. So just, we'd like to get that going again. I'd like to see, get us get, us, get some more signs around the neighborhood just to remind folks um, to drive the speed limit. They've been very popular and people are, are looking forward to putting some more up, so that's great. Um, that's all I have, Kathy. Okay, thank you very much. There are some important numbers and tips, but if anybody's interested in it, it will be on our Facebook page. Also, um, Mike Fenton is with us. Mike, did you wanna have a, a minute? Yeah, hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Hi, um, first, thank you, uh, Officer Vasquez and Lieutenant Toledo. Lieutenant Toledo is spectacular. We're really lucky to have him um, helping in East Springfield. So thank you for that. I just thank wanted you, to talk about the work issue. Um, it's like, it's out of control. And it's not just in East Springfield. It's not just Springfield. It's the suburbs and the other urban cities in West Mass. There's been news reporting on it. And I'm glad that Lieutenant Toledo pointed out some of the specifics of the punishments that are available for selling fireworks, civil fines up to $1,000 and arrest. And there are also criminal complaints that can be brought for utilizing fireworks. But the reason I'm saying all this is I'm gonna propose a change to the municipal ordinances to increase the fine for firework usage and possession. Currently under the state statute, it's only $100, um, but we're gonna try 300. So I just wanted to point that out to everybody. That sounds great, Mike. I, I, would, I would definitely be a supporter of that. I mean, there's, there are a lot of, I mean, you would be shocked to see how many calls for service you get for fireworks and those calls for service tie up the cars that could be better utilized for, for emergency calls. And there, there's so many, like I said, on one night during a four hour time frame, I took upwards north of 40 calls for service for fireworks. And it's, it, it presents a challenge too, because when you get there, they're either already lit or they're gone, you know? So there's some challenges around that, but right. yeah. Michael, that's great. I think that's, uh, that's forward thinking because um, the complaints that people put forward on the fireworks are, are significant and they're just, they're not safe. And we haven't had rain in a couple of weeks. Um, so yeah. I, I worry. Well, it's just, it's too regular. I mean, I don't, if somebody lights a few fireworks off, you know, the officers can put their 
earmuffs on. But, you know, on the 4th of July, a few days before, a few days yeah. after, that's not really that big of a deal. But this is not that. This is every night, all out of the night, every day, starting in and every, every area. So, you know, we recognize that it's really difficult to police and we just have to make the, uh, we have to make the risks greater um, for the people that are doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, John, are there, can I are there take one second, questions? please? John, Officer one thing, uh, 1515 Carew Street, it is a vacant house. It was renovated. Um, okay. The door has been um, addressed. Queen City did uh, put up a board to prevent the um, the guy from trying to get back in. Apparently, they got into the basement the last time when that trespasser got locked up. Um, the other house is 1608 Cruise Street, which is vacant. Um, code enforcement and me are working with the bank and the realtors and monitoring that activity and making sure that uh, the houses are um, maintained and uh, they aren't an eyesore in the community, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it sounds like we're just about at the end of the meeting. Could I please remind everybody who's um, on our Facebook that we will be having our next meeting um, as a virtual meeting on July 7th, not July 7th. Yes, July 7th, I'm sorry, July 7th at 6.30. And um, please, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, please call us, email us between now and then or, and or join in on July 7th. We really need to keep our communications going because we can't meet in person yet, hopefully soon. So thank you very much for joining in. Please communicate with us as, as best you can. We're here for you and we know that the community is stronger together. So have a good night, be safe. Um, and I did get notification that there are some, they're going to have COVID-19 testing tomorrow and Thursday. And you can find that information. We're gonna put it on our, um, our Facebook page, right Guy? Yeah, I'll get that up tonight. We'll get it right up tonight, but it's tomorrow and Thursday. You don't have to have symptoms. Um, and there are at least three places in Springfield that you can do it, and it's right across the state. So if you're interested in the COVID-19 test, take a look at the, the website, and um, we'll see you next month. Thank you very much. Have a nice night. Thank you, everybody. Um, everybody wants to hang in there, you can. Lieutenant, thank you. 